I know it's raining, but can you tell me what you just called those again? The raindrops? No, 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 no. no, no. Whatever's? Yeah. You realized, I know you have three kids. You called them the swipers. I said the windshield wipers. No, no, no. Because we were talking about, you were a little worried about play the, the sound. Tape. When you did can't I say play it? the tape. Exactly. So where, where's your proof? Ranch? <laughs> you can't just call me Ranch. This is, <laughs> I'm going to nickname it Ranch. This is what happens when I have to get up in the morning after not sleeping, drink a monster, go to pick you up, and then you give me coffee. There's too much caffeine that one body can take. I would fail an NFL drug test right now with all the caffeine that I have. Subscribe now and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. What's wrong with this guy? It's like that scene in Dodgeball where, like, here somebody I'm not came even drinking yet because I was gonna have yeah. me Somebody tested positive for steroids <laughs> and a rare beaver tranquilizer. <laughs> Damn it, Bernice! <laughs> so, Paul, I would love, absolutely love, to get your take on Ed Oliver at nine. Not just Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver at nine. Do it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Right. See you next week. My concern about Ed Oliver is not on the field. Oh, see, this is always the tricky one. Yeah. So, so my concern about Ed Oliver is not on the field. On the field, guy's a stud. You can play him anywhere on the defensive line. That's but great. here is the here's a, a couple issues that I see with him. Right. So he t he's he's measuring in at like two seventy. Okay. Not hateful. No. Not hateful. But what it does is a guy with his skill set becomes very attractive to three, four teams because he's that per he's fast. So as he's, a defensive, he, he's, as he's a defensive running a four end. seven. No, you're talking about his defensive end. Uh -huh. So two seventy four seven, playing on the end like a three four. Like he's not a, your typical. Uh, he's not your typical three four end. Which is why I think he'd be so attractive to some of these three four teams. Normally, those three four ends are big. Hulking guys. A lot of times they're deep tackles on other teams. Yeah. So um, he's going to be coveted by three, four teams because he's a different type of player that still easily could play the position. Right? Yeah. The, the thing that stands out about Oliver to me is just a lot of these guys you'll see will come out. And we've mentioned it before. The guys just start to beat other players with raw athleticism and strength. I'm just stronger than you, I win. I'm faster than you, I win. Right. This guy is so technically sound in what he does right. that, okay, he's just doing the basic things and he's not even using his strength or speed yet. Nope. And he's beating the crap out of everybody. Yep. So that it's going up like to the next level. not playing against garbage competition. No, no. So in that respect, he's going to have a leg up on anybody else, which is why he's so highly coveted because he's so technically sound and what he does, and you, like you said, you can move him anywhere. Right. So, so you can play him anywhere. You want to play him on DN? Play him on DN. Here's my question. Do you think he's more coveted to three, four teams? I think he'll be as coveted to three, four teams as, as four, three teams. And I think that happens. I don't think that happens often, right? Where you look at a guy who really played D tackle, and every NFL team goes, this guy could be a monster on the edge. I, uh, I, I don't wanna, think that happens often. I want to respectfully disagree. Oh, no, I would love to have this conversation. Because we, I have talked many times about this. In a 3-4 defense, a base 3-4, your stud is the nose. Your stud is that haloti nada. Yep. Um, you know, that big horse right in the middle. He has to control everything in the middle. In a 4-3, your middle linebacker is your stud. Right. He's got to control everything in the middle. Right. For the most part. Um, with the weight that you just gave me at 270, I find it hard to put him directly on the nose. You have more positions you can put him in on a 4-3 defensive front than a 3-4 defensive front. Yeah, he can play all across. The only thing he can do in a 3-4 is just play the edge. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's it. So would he get washed inside is my point? Like, if he, te if he tried to do a twist with the nose, you think he'd get washed in front? But... Even though he's so technically sound, he would be able to stand. That's around. that's why I think that three four teams are water. Ah, gotcha. Two ninety one. Two ninety one. That changes the whole aspect of it now.
but he just at his pro day he was lighter. At his pro day he checked in. In the in I thought he checked in at the high seventies. Let me let me let me check that out. Hold so on. he was two ninety one at the combine. He dropped fifteen pounds. At the combine he checked in at two eighty seven. At his pro day he checked in at two eighty one. A lot of those edge rushers that you start to have now, they're how tall is Oliver? I forgot. Six two. So he's six, six one. So oh, he's, sorry, 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 sorry. Six two. He is six two. So he's six two, two eighty seven. A lot of these edge rushers that have the four six speeds, four six four five, uh-huh. which is insane. Uh-huh. They're like, they're about six two, two uh, two sixty. So is he trying to is he trying to be an edge rusher because there's more money in it for him? I mean, you take a look at where he's going to be able to play, and if you want to play inside, he'll put the weight back on. Yeah, I that's, think that's I think that's kind of the angle. That's tough having there. a guy do that though, because then you got to adjust some of your techniques. The fact still remains. You can put him anywhere. You can put him absolutely anywhere. Is he worth up. nine? Yeah, hundred percent. He's not. Gonna, it's not glamorous. Like it no. wouldn't be. Like, but I mean, everyone thinks that the. And here's the interesting part about it. The Bills had an excellent defense last year. Uh-huh. The biggest complaint is that they couldn't stop the run. Which is fun- which is fascinating that. because for the first seven weeks we talked about, God, nobody's running inside on the Bills. Nobody ran inside of the Bills. Yeah, but you can go back ran. and watch every yeah. single one of those games. If you tried to run inside on the Bills, you, could. you weren't going anywhere. And then all of a sudden, floodgates opened up because teams stopped trying to run inside on the Bills. And the Bills made adjustments for whatever they did, and then all of a sudden, the the inside was, you could gash the Bills inside. But yeah. for the first seven weeks of the season, you couldn't you couldn't drive a truck through that line. No, it wasn't it wasn't going anywhere. So this whole the Bills were terrible against the run all last well, season no, no, they, they, is just nonsense. No, it's, the, the, it's revisionist history. That's no, not the way it was the first. They seven were weeks. they were you're you're taking one point of it away. They were awesome. Running in, be- in between the tackles, you could not run. You can get outside on them, which is weird because you had Milano and Edmonds. Right. But so for the first six weeks, people weren't running inside. They were running outside on them. Right. And then we, you had a couple games in there near the end of the year, which is what most people remember, where the New England game and a lot of those games, Milano's not in the game. Uh, Teron Johnson's out. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys that were there to do some of those things. I mean, you got a tackle coming out on Hyde. Come on. Who's going to win that battle? What's he going to do? Submarine his knees to try to get the running back? But the point being is that the defense that was this good had a – it was a playoff defense. Let's just put it that way. It was a playoff caliber defense. Um, talking about your first top ten pick being a defender is interesting to me. I find it interesting because – People want to say that the Bills need another DT rotational talent. <clears throat> the Bills really have no problem finding rotational talent across the line. They, they have it for a while, right? But I want to give you the incredibly optimistic Ed Oliver comparisons. Are you ready? This is somebody who clearly thinks Ed Oliver should be the first overall pick with the things that I'm going to say. And I'm going to quote who it is because it's absurd. It's, Is it it's you? crazy. It's Alex Kirshner, and this was written on SB Nation just a couple days ago. Okay, you ready? Sure. Size-wise, Ed Oliver is basically Aaron Donald. This is all looking at combine. So from combine, we get a combine performance. It's Aaron Donald in 2014, 6'1", 285, Ed Oliver, 6'2", 287. Comparable. Okay. Only not measuring wig span, not doing any, just, just height and weight. Very, this is very pro at Oliver. In the forty-yard dash, Oliver is basically Arian Foster. Oliver ran a four-seven-three at his pro day. Foster ran a four-six-nine at the two thousand nine combine. And the bench press at Oliver is basically in Dominican Sue. They both did thirty-two reps. In the shuttle run, Oliver is basically Le'Veon Bell. Oliver actually had a better shuttle time than Le'Veon Bell. Uh, in the three cone drill, Oliver is basically Jason Pierre Paul. Oliver had a better time than Jason Pierre Paul in his pro day. In the vertical jump, Oliver is basically Von Miller. Von Miller, 37. Oliver, 36. 
In the broad jump, Oliver is basically Amari Cooper or J.J. Watt. Whichever one you want. 120 inches in the, uh, in the broad. And you think you were going to get a restraining order? I know, right? The article ends with, I'm not a fancy NFL draft analyst, but I feel confident writing this letter now. Dear Arizona Cardinals, attention Cliff Kingsbury. Draft this man first overall and then go have a snack. <laughs> Best, Alex. That's incredibly optimistic and pro at Oliver, but what that doesn't say is who the kid is off the field, right? Yeah. So I think it's important to go back and look at interviews on pro days. Right? Because this is why we don't always go by stats. Yeah. Ed Oliver <laughs> is, you know, talking about himself, right, and his performance, and <clears throat> not a very eloquent gentleman, I guess the best way for me to put it, right? So, in I Buffalo... I be articulate. Well, in Buffalo, that's a big deal, right? That's a real big deal. Did you go to the senior bowl? Did you work out really well? Are you a good dude? Are you is a he a good, good dude? You just can't talk? Is that what you're telling me? We had Le- Leotis McKelvin for 20 years here. He, got, uh, he, 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 that's all. he was nine numb from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> the fact remains that that was a different, that was a different organization back then. So you can't really, we can joke okay. about Leotis McKelvin. We can joke about it, but it's, it's not happening. We kid, we kid. So Ed Oliver at nine will not be decided based off his talent. It will be decided on how his interviews have gone with the team oh. at the scouting combine. That's what it's going to be. Please don't. That's what Please. it is. No. It's what it is. If that's the reason they don't pick him. that's That would be the reason that they don't pick him. Because you could do anything with him. You need to replace Shaq Lawson? No problem. You're worried about replacing Jerry Hughes? No problem. You well, can do that. Apparently, you can put him at wide out because he's Amari Cooper, too. Yeah, right. But the fact remains that you can put this guy anywhere, and he's going to be fine. I think he's a little misplaced at defensive tackle. Because unless you're looking for... Which is probably why he lost some weight. He wants to prove that's he's a I mean. DN. I think that's what he's trying to do is show that he's quick enough to be a DN. I don't I think well he's got it in a film so he can play DT. So he's shedding the weight to say, I'm I'm fast, guys. If you need me out there, I'm gonna be out there. Yeah, yeah, I'll be able to do that. Now, what if a team drafted him and said, Can you get down to like two sixty five? Oh god, don't no. Can you get no, down no. to like two sixty five? Yeah. To play outside, like in a three-four outside it. linebacker. Stop it! We've seen we've seen teams take guys like him before and turn them into outside backers. That's a very that's that's phenomenal. You've seen teams do it. That is phenomenal. So that's what I mean. You look at it and you say. But you're telling he, them to play a complete. It's like not going from D D tech to D O. It's completely different. Yes, Mario Williams to do it. Yeah. Yes, and he tore his ACL. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's used to going forward, not sideways. Yeah. I saw I mean, Kyle Williams drop into coverage a couple times the last few years. <laughs> he has a pick. <laughs> he does have a pick. Jay Cutler. I don't care. I really don't care. <laughs> uh, that's, cra- a, that's a very fascinating thing to bring up The craziness of the draft, though, makes you Brings, ask yeah. those questions. Here's my question to you. We talked about signing a guy to a, a big contract. You don't have that in Buffalo, all right? You sign a guy to a big contract like a sh- like a defensive back, mm-hmm. and then Hughes and Lawson are going, oh, wait, that's my money that you're signing this guy to a huge right. contract to. Why are you doing that? What does drafting Oliver at nine say to lost? It's, does it send the same message in the locker room? No, it doesn't because you just lost Kyle Williams, right? Well, if so he's, it's, if he, it's a but then they thing. ask him to get down and go to DN, that might send a message to Austin like, yeah, we didn't draft you, by the way. We're still holding you to that point. You yeah. did what you had to do. Yeah. Um, but I think it's fascinating. I just don't know about a, a nine that's a rotational player. Like I don't know how, how many percent. They're all Aaron rotational Donald. players across that NFL. They're all rotational players. Did Donald that was Donald that though? Was he only playing sixty percent of the snaps? No, no, no. I'm just saying they're they're rotational in the Bills system. That's it. And do you need That's a, what I'm saying? Do you need that if he if he's if he's not gonna play that much? But t- but look at the dynamics across the line right now. Is Shaq Lawson getting to the quarterback? No, he needs ancillary pressure to get to the quarterback. He needs somebody else to push the QB. He's on the wrong team. side to get to the quarterback. I agree with that. Yeah. Right. So Jerry Hughes, he's your guy that's supposed to get to the quarterback. That's the goal. They're supposed both. They're both really possibly on the last years of their deal. Okay. Now let's look at the defensive line. Is Jordan Phillips a pass rush specialist? No. no. Is Starla Tulele a pass rush specialist? No. Only if he gets a five yard head start. But he's a pass rush specialist to the linebacker blitzing behind him. Right. He's going to take two guys. Right. Is Ed Oliver a pass rush specialist inside? Yes, he is. 
So you take a look at what you need across that defensive line. If you want your defensive ends to be a little bit more effective, you got to get some guy, somebody who can shed that inside center, that inside guard quick. You have a Latula there who's, who's going to basically be playing a nose and hugging two boys. That's his job is to go out so there and take up bodies. basically what you're saying is that they can draft Ed Oliver. You don't, you're not a fan of putting him inside. However, you can have him next to Star Latula. They start eating up two bodies. All Oliver has to do is beat the guard one-on-one. That's it. You're basically you're making him a defensive end just against a slower interior lineman because you know you know Latulale is going to be snagging the center and and the other guard, which is going to leave that one gap open. Okay, so here's here's my question. Last 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 part. You draft at Oliver. That's saying that is that sending a message to the secondary that hey you guys need some help because we need to go. Or does that send a message to Tremaine Edmonds saying, yeah, we're, we're going to occupy one up front for you so you don't get sticky inside anymore? Think about what would, ha- what would happen. Edmonds would have Edmonds. 175 tackles next yeah. year if, if they draft out all of them. Yeah. And there would probably be like 13, 14 picks for both corners. <laughs> <laughs> it would allow, what it would do is it would allow Edmonds to play more free. Right, it would be okay for him it to would. make a mistake because the pressure would be coming in, coming inside. The quarterback would have to make a decision. If you have pressure coming from from the from the one to four gaps inside, it makes the quarterback have to make a decision to what side of the field there they have to go to. And if you can make a quarterback force a decision like that, if you can make a quarterback give you the answer to the test, right, mm-hmm. by saying, okay, this side of the field not relevant anymore. It, it your safeties. Slide your linebackers. Slide. I mean, the game gets easier. You're only playing half the field. It's like playing the Buffalo Bills the last 17 years. You only have to play half the field. Or when Tyrod was on their center. I mean, you could just take it either way. You know what's amazing as what? well? We talked about running backs. Mm-hmm. You drafted in the first round because they 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 they're two positions. Yeah. You draft that Oliver. You don't need to draft a, a Sam linebacker. No. You can go nickel, and he all he, the time he fulfills two positions for you because he'll get there. You don't need a guy to blitz. He plays defensive tackle and puts pressure, so you can play two linebackers and then six, five defensive backs behind it. Yeah, you can really you can really go light at the sand position. Oh, good lord! Yeah, draft him now. I, I approve it. <laughs>